The city is always a feast for an observant little monkey's eyes. And this morning, George was feasting on bold, colorful signs. Ah! Ooh, wow, that's a pretty startling poster, huh? Ah Hi, Steve. I didn't know you worked here. I don't. I just change the posters when the new movies come. And the manager lets me keep the old ones. <laughs> My collection's ah! huge. I bet I hold the most poster record. You want to see it? Come on! <laughs> sure, George. Have fun. <laughs> Collection's great. My favorite stuff's always around me. <laughs> At that moment, George decided he needed two things to start his very own collection of his favorite stuff <laughs> and to stop spinning around. <laughs> All the way home, George tried to decide which of his favorite things to collect. He could collect great looking signs, just like that guy. <laughs> George set out to find the best looking signs in town. Sadly, one of his favorite signs was too big to take home. <laughs> Boy, they really make the animals earn their keep here. George had a sign Hundley might like. A smart looking dog with a bright red line. Hundley did enjoy his sign. But not for long. Sorry fella, you can't be in here. George's collection was off to a great start. But there was still plenty of room. So George went back to the park. Uh, pedestrians only! Ah, uh, says who? <laughs> hmm. 
Nothing makes Dusk special like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ah, ooh. <laughs> and a lightning bug chase. <laughs> and nothing slams the brakes on fun like some strange cat eating your sandwich. This was one weird cat, but it needed to know whose food that was. <laughs> George didn't know what just happened, but he knew it stunk. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> did, did you meet a skunk? Mm-hmm. If it's about the size of a cat with a bigger tail, that smell and nocturnal... <laughs> nocturnal. Oh, sorry, that means it comes out at night. If it's all those things, that's a skunk. <laughs> oh, you won't smell bad forever. Uh, tomato juice gets the smell out. <laughs> To prevent getting smelled up again, George created an anti-skunk tool. <laughs> this time he'd scare that skunk so it would stay far away from him. Oh, this must have frightened it. Skunks only spray that smell when they're scared, and loud noises scare them. Yeah, if, if you see it again, George, run inside until it passes, okay? The next night, George brought tools to help him spot the skunk. this hole because the skunk's been staying under the house. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not in there now. Phew. Skunks are scared of bright light, you know. Take a bath in tomato juice. Mm, wow. Well, good thing we're going back to the city tomorrow. We're out of tomato juice. At the end of the night, the skunk was tired but it found its old sleeping place sealed up. This looked like a dark, cozy, excellent place to sleep all day. Hmm, now where did I leave that basket? We don't want to wake the neighbors. George was happy because he had a very important job to do today. Meow. Meow. <laughs> very funny, George. 
And no, it wasn't doing cat impersonations. His job was to watch Professor Wiseman's new kitten, Lucky, who was too young to take care of himself. We have to go now. Can you believe city workers digging a new water pipe found dinosaur bones? Yeah, George, we only have a few hours to rescue the bones before they start digging again. We're lucky to get even a few hours. And speaking of lucky, you're too little and too silly to come along, aren't you? Aren't you? Bye, Lucky. <laughs> Thanks, George. See you back home, George. And please take good care of Lucky. <laughs> good. George planned on taking excellent care of Lucky. <laughs> You're in charge of the lobby till I get back, Hundley. <laughs> now, what was that monkey bringing into his lobby? Probably something that spills or smells or oozes or... <laughs> Lucky had no idea what Hundley was. He'd never seen a dog before. <laughs> But he liked the way it smelled. He liked the way it felt. And he liked the way it sounded. In fact, Lucky liked everything about Hundley. Hundley wasn't so sure a dignified dachshund should allow a kitty to walk on his back. <laughs> Hundley! Bless you. Is this your kitten, George? <laughs> Hunley's allergic to certain cats, and that cat must be one of them. Please, keep it away! Lucky missed Hundley already. But how could Lucky be with Hundley if he wasn't allowed near him? George could build Lucky a perfect sneeze-free wiener dog. Lucky seemed to like the way Hundley sounded. What did Hundley sound like? George had to find something that made a bump bump sound. Now, what else did Lucky like about Hundley? Lucky liked the way Hundley felt. used to encountering new, unexplained things, but this was pretty mysterious. <laughs> well, I'm practicing my smile for my new driver's license picture. It, those are bad, but this time I'm preparing a perfect smile. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, right. I, I should practice with my hat on. <laughs> George? Can you have it cleaned and ready by two? It's very important. You'll have it by two, good as new. Uh, what was this again? A hat. It's a hat. I, I, I need it for my photo. Without my yellow hat, I, I'm not... me. Go home. Relax. I'll deliver it. Minutes can seem like hours when you're waiting for a hat to be blocked. <gasps> oh, it's time for my run. Uh, George, will you stay here in case the hat's delivered while I'm gone? <laughs> oh, and could you please throw that stuff out for me? It's trash day. from Natoya's cleaners. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you. If everybody had a monkey, I'd be rich. <laughs> the hat was home. Everything was perfect. <laughs> Was a funny smell for a clean hat. Huh? Why, it smelled just like garbage. away by mistake, it'll be in the dumpster downstairs. Come on! Phew. The trash chute led to a dumpster, so the garbage hauler could take the trash away, which is what she was doing at that very second. that shoot ends up right... Uh-oh. Huh? Well, the garbage truck came. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it was Friday night in the country, which, for a man and his monkey, meant bowling at Bullmore Lanes. This Friday was extra special. It was the night of the bowling championship. There were a lot of good bowlers, but the man with the yellow hat was the only contender whose cheering squad <laughs> applauded with his feet. Ha <laughs> ha! 
thanks, George, but if I don't use my bowling ball, I can't seem to hit anything. Uh. <sighs> yes! Hey! Oh, this is it, George. The last roll of the game. George loved Mrs. Rankin's ball. It was so bright and shiny and cowy. <laughs> well, who won? Um, you two are tied. That means tomorrow night you compete in a one-game tiebreaker roll-off. Oh, here we go! Here we go! You want to roll one, George? This one's light. Whenever George bowled, it was a gutter ball. Oh, you'll get better. It takes practice. See you at the playoffs. And may the best bowler win. <laughs> the next morning, there was the type of excitement in the air only bowling can bring. You know, I, I actually feel nervous about tonight's roll-off. <laughs> ah, nothing makes a guy feel lucky like freshly polished bowling shoes. Mm -hmm. Bowl, bowl, bowl your ball briskly down the lane. If polished shoes were lucky, a polished bowling ball must be super duper lucky. George decided to surprise the man by polishing his ball. This was the heaviest bowling ball ever. Fortunately, it rolled. Unfortunately, it kept on rolling. In fact, bowling balls didn't seem to know when to stop rolling. Merrily, 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 lots of strikes and spares. <laughs> if the ball didn't need polishing before, it sure needed it now. George! Oh, there you are. Hey, uh, don't get too dirty. We need to leave for the bowling alley soon. <laughs> of all the party sights, sounds, smells, and tastes, one thing caught George's interest. And it smelled like candy. Like my pinata, George? <laughs> I'm glad you like it, because it's time to break it. <laughs> George, it's a game. Whoever breaks it wins the candy inside. <laughs> you want to go first? <laughs> You have to hit the piñata with the bat. <laughs> Hold on. Huh? You're not ready yet. <laughs> okay, give it your best whack. Again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Oh, never mind. <laughs> George was sure he'd whack that piñata by now. <laughs> well, this is a good time to make lemonade. Everyone inside. I think George feels a little shy about... About smashing the place up? About not winning. Could you please ask him to rejoin the party? Can I sit with you? If I go in, I have to keep waiting on my little sister and her little friends. You know... I could show you how to whack a piñata the right way. Huh? <laughs> sure, it'd give me a reason to stay out here longer. <laughs> you always play follow the leader with Charky all over the neighborhood, right? <laughs> play now, except do it without seeing her. <laughs> Go on, Charky, you're leader. George knew that sound. <laughs> That's right, follow her. <laughs> you gotta figure out how to avoid walking into trees. Without looking. Hey, do you want to get good at this and win piñata candy or what? <laughs> I'll get us some lemonade. Watching you run around is making me thirsty. Keep following her while I'm gone. Charky got quiet, so George concentrated on listening. <laughs> If there was one thing Charky loved more than escaping, it was follow the leader. Steve was right. George could tell exactly where Charky was. Ugh, I'm glad I don't have to be in there. I'm too old and too smart to be playing. Uh-oh. <laughs> After a big meal, there's nothing a monkey likes more than a game of wild goose chase. Oh, Jojo! Uh, wish me luck, George. I got a big, big meeting today. <laughs> Here you go, George. Have at it. <laughs> Digesting was twice as nice with dice. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Actually, you need to move one more square, George. George liked getting geese. But he knew the man was wrong. He had moved three. <laughs> I showed you this last time we played, remember? Oh, George, you don't count the square from where you start. You have to count on from there. One, two, three. You see? <laughs> well, uh, think of it this way. If you always rolled one but didn't move ahead, you'd spend the whole game on the first square. George wasn't so sure about this. What if the man was just trying to let him win? Oh my, Chef! Chef Pischetti! Oh, my poor Chef Pischetti. It's a terrible. This is just awful. What's wrong, Nettie? Chef Pischetti is starting a new food business. Wow, 
Today's his big meeting with important clients. But he forgot his pie. Ooh. His presentation will fall flat without it. Oh, my poor Chef Pischetti. I would take the pie to him. But someone has to keep an eye on the restaurant. Oh, what do I do? <laughs> George could do the delivery. It'd be as easy as pie. Oh, grazie, Giorgio. You are an angel. He sure was. If angels were small and hairy and used their feet as hands. Oh, oh, oh. Be careful, George. The pie must be perfect, and it has to be there no later than 3.30. Now, here's how to get there. First, take the number three pass, three stops to Third Avenue. Uh -huh. Look out! Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ah. I don't know how to stop these things! <laughs> Sorry, George! knew where the pie had to go. He just hoped he could get it there in one piece. Ah! My wife Nettie called! Uh, the primo biscotti pie will be here soon! Whew. George had to ride for three stops. But counting stops was hard if your hands were full of pie. Luckily, George was on his toes. This was George's first bus stop. Now, just two more to go. This was George's second bus stop. Finally, the third stop. Um, George, have you gotten those... toys put away yet? <laughs> wow, that was fast. <laughs> Well, if you can't fit your toys in here, ugh, you should probably give some away to make room. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Let's get some fruit crates from the market to help you get organized. George wasn't sure if the fruit crates would help. But he liked the fact that they smelled like apples. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Done! Way to go, son! You shaved two seconds off your average time. <laughs> <laughs> but George won't count as a produce item in the competition. <laughs> Sorry, George. I guess I got carried away. I'm training for the final round of the Bag Olympics on Saturday. This could be the year we finally beat Large Mart. They've won three years in a row. Maybe you could teach George how to pack his toys this neatly. <laughs> sure. I can show you how it's done, George. You could help by timing me with the stopwatch. Hit that button to start counting the seconds. 
hit it again to stop it, and hit the other one to reset. <laughs> okay, be a good little monkey learning to pack stuff neatly. George was sure all those groceries would not fit into one paper bag. The clock's running, I know. Oh, uh, oh I hate canned hams. Although they are delicious. Oh, they're a bagger's nightmare. What a weird shape. It's short, it's tall, it's round, it's flat. Oh, oh. It's the beast of all processed meats. <laughs> Canned hams are the least of your worries. Hello, Rodney. I've got a new technique for bagging deli meats that'll make your head spin. You want to see speed? Come on, George. <laughs> I'll watch from out here. I wouldn't want anyone to mistake me for an employee of this place. Bad sprain, but you'll be as good as new in a week. But the competition's this weekend. Too bad. I was really looking forward to beating you. Why are you in my doctor's office? I care about my competition, but it looks like I have none. Rodney, we have another bagger who could beat you with three hands tied behind his back. Huh? Huh? That monkey? George has worked at the store, so he can represent us in the contest. Well, I, uh, uh oh yeah? <laughs> It'll take practice, but I'll teach you everything I know. Will you do it? <laughs> George thought the best vegetables in the world came from the market. Oh. I was thinking about making vegetable soup tonight. <laughs> but that got me thinking about Chef Paschetti's fresh vegetable soup and spinach ravioli. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, George? <laughs> Minestrone with extra carrots and spinach ravioli for two. Natty, stop! Don't take that order! Huh? Is something wrong, Chef Paschetti? Wrong? Oh, yes. I am all out of carrots and spinach. I, Paschetti, have failed you. Chef, can't you just go get some fresh vegetables? I don't want to keep them waiting. <laughs> oh, we'd wait all night for your fresh vegetables, Chef. Uh -huh. They're the reason we come here. <laughs> uh, you want to help me get fresh veggies off the roof, Giorgio? Uh -huh. Did he say the roof? Doesn't the grocer make the fresh vegetables at the market? You see, other veggies grow on farms far away. Then they travel to a store where they sit around until you buy them. My veggies grow here. Go down to the kitchen, then to your belly on the same day. George didn't see any carrots here. Huh. Veggies come from dirt. <laughs> weeds. Weeds. Oh, yeah, monster also. Oh, weeds are bad. Very bad. You see, 
Weeds like this soak up the water and nutrients from the soil that my veggies need to grow. If my veggies can't grow, my food won't be piscati fresh. And if it's not, I will close it down. Oh. Yes, I will close my restaurant before I let anyone think piscati is not the best they ever tasted. I must pull those weeds. But after working hard all day, I'm too tired to get it all done. George couldn't stop thinking about Chef Pischetti's weed problem. After working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I didn't think you were paying attention. I'll start again. The Shoemaker and the Elves. Once there was a shoemaker who, after working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. I am too tired to get it all done, he thought. But if I don't, my customer will have but one shoe and may hop over to another cobbler. He couldn't stay awake. As he slept, an amazing thing happened. Elves did his work for him. When the cobbler awoke, he didn't know how that shoe got finished. Aww. George wondered if a little monkey could be an elf for a chef. First thing the next morning, George did some secret elf weeding. <laughs> George dug up every nasty green thing he saw. Three bags full. Hello, Giorgio. You want to come help me get fresh veggies for today's food? <laughs> now it was time for Elf George to see how happy he'd made the chef. I'm ruined! <laughs> it's all gone. The weeds and almost all of my veggies. What am I gonna cook? It looked like the perfect day for a long hike in the nature preserve. Now where are you folks headed? Look out Ridge, I need to do five scenic sketches for art class. And I need to add to my deciduous leaf collection. I get it, a loose leaf notebook. That's one down already. Oh, it's gonna be a great day. According to the map, the trail's that way. All right. Um, George? Some days, even the most curious monkey just wants to sit and color. Let's go. I promise you'll find hiking exciting. Hey, have a safe hike! Speaking of safety, you have our food, matches, first aid kit, and rope, right? All here. Good. I have the map. And we each have water. And whistles in case we need to signal someone. Great. <gasps> a silver birch! Can we stop? Oh, sure. This could be my second sketch. Huh? How could anyone be that excited about trees? <laughs> Done. All right. Everyone ready to move on? Hikers hike out with everything they bring in, or they use a trash can.
George! Look over here! Ah. There, there was a beaver right there. You just missed it. Ah. Say, this would make a nice sketch. Seeing a beaver might be exciting. That beaver couldn't stay under forever. All done. See any beavers? Uh, they must be in their lodge. That's what they call their house. They enter it from underwater. Uh, Sorry, George. Time to move on. Uh, Hiking must be another word for disappointing. Um, George? Veer... right. <laughs> Bill found rare leaves. The man with the yellow hat sketched. But George didn't see anything he couldn't see at home. We'll stay a while, then hike back. Huh? That's right. Ah. They had to hike all the way back again. On warm evenings, George always filled the bird feeder at bedtime. Time for bed, George. That way, in the morning, he woke up to the sound of happy birds. Huh? Oh. Huh? <laughs> ah. Empty. Birds never ate the seeds that fast. Maybe a big bird gulped it all down first thing in the morning. <gasps> no. George would have noticed giant feathers in the neighborhood. Hmm. Hey, George. Huh? What you looking at? <laughs> Baby possum tracks. Okay. Short for a possum. Maybe you've never seen one because they're nocturnal. <laughs> nocturnal animals are active at night when the rest of us sleep and the town is quiet. <laughs> I gotta finish my route. See ya. <laughs> a possum? George wondered what a possum looked like. So the next night, he prepared for a stakeout. Since he might get hungry if it took a long time, he made himself a tuna fish and banana sandwich. And then he waited with only the radio to keep him company. Are you ready to hear the legend of the lake creature of Lake Wanasink Lake? <laughs> well, it's said to roam the countryside the first full moon of every summer. And that's tonight. Was this a possum? And if it was, 
Was it all right? <laughs> well, it certainly had an appetite. Its tracks matched the others. So this was a possum. Now that George had seen one, he could go to bed. George told it to go home, but it didn't go. Maybe the baby possum was lost and needed help finding its family. Aww. But George had no idea where the possum's family lived. Hmm. The possum ate some bird food. Maybe it lived with birds in a nest. See a creature with the head of a fish wandering through town. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's the late creature. George decided that possums and birds probably didn't live together. George thought he knew all the animals on Rankin's farm, but maybe he only knew the day animals. George had never seen a bird like this in the daytime. It must be nocturnal, too. Possum's family wouldn't live here. It was too noisy. <laughs> Spring had arrived. <laughs> it was the perfect day for George to break his moon ball record. George! Time to come in. Come on. Bedtime. <laughs> oh, I get it. You think because the sun is out, you should be out. <laughs> well, George, in the winter, the days are short, so it's dark at dinner time and dark at bedtime. But now it's spring, so the days are longer. It's light when you eat dinner and light when you go to bed. Well, 7.30 means bedtime no matter how light it is outside, George. I know. <laughs> it was hard to fall asleep with the sun out. <laughs> Counting sheep seemed like a good idea. But even the sheep were out enjoying the sunshine. It just wasn't fair to make a monkey go to bed and miss all this. George didn't fall asleep until the sun went down. There we go. Good morning, George. I put new batteries in the clock, so now I'm setting the time. Look, I can move the time forward like this. Or backward like this. <laughs> See, the little hand points to the hour, eight,
and the big hand tells you how long until the next hour. Eight thirty, halfway to nine o'clock. So while my bedroom clock and watch are in the shop, Olga will make sure we're on time for things like going to bed. You know, I'd like to get a surprise for George. He's been really good about sticking to his bedtime. Hmm. Hey, what about a blimp ride? The Rough Week blimp is in town this week, and I know the owner. Oh, George would love a blimp ride. <laughs> well, good. Mr. Rough Week will be here tomorrow at 9:30. You can make an appointment with him, but be on time. Mr. Rough Week keeps a tight schedule. <laughs> George, it's bedtime. I'm sorry, George. It's seven thirty. If it were six thirty, you could keep playing, but it's not. Six thirty. George just learned how to change time this morning. Well, your bed is all ready for you. <laughs> oh, it's only. Huh? I thought. Oh, sorry. I guess you still have an hour to play. <laughs> Can't be late. Mm. Well, they were out of jelly donuts, so I got chocolate. You're late. I, I the, I, 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 that's not possible. 